the essence of good seafood is about from net to plate, being yeah. as close as you can from getting it out the sea to getting it onto the platter. So it's signature dish time, and we're here in uh, Randall and Arbin. Beautiful, and we're with legend Ed Burns. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Flattered. How's it going? Yeah, good. Good. Very well. Good stuff. Uh, so your signature dish. Yeah. I'm sure people have noticed. It is here. I'm, so plat fruit de mer. <laughs> Bit of French. Is that all right? That's a fruit de mer. <laughs> Much better. This is the big boy. This is the, the, the biggest dish on the menu. Um, obviously, it's a selection of, of all different varieties of crustacean, yeah. um, which is what it's all about, really. So the first thing, you know, it's, it's a protein fest. It's all extremely healthy. Um, you know, it's all, it's all good. And if we work our way through it, what you get is this would be a sharing platter. Right. Uh, yeah, so not four of you could go for this. Two of you could go for it. It's a minimum of two people. I don't think anyone's ever sat there individually <laughs> and, and plowed their way through that because it's just too much. But obviously, you've got lots of different varieties of seafood. The essence of good seafood is about from net to plate, being yeah. as close as you can from getting it out the sea to getting it onto the platter. So, for example, the crab. I mean, when you eat that, you know, you're looking at something that's, that's three hours fresh. Do you know? And it's about as fresh as you get. Working here, you've got the whelks. Down in the southeast, because obviously yeah. it's around Auburn in London, but we're in Bridge Street here. Down in the southeast, might be more popular the whelks down there yeah, than yeah, they are up here. Now, yeah. But um, one of those things, whelks are like, you know, try it. It's, it's to me, I love the flavour of whelks. A nice bit of shallot vinegar. Okay. Uh, it's a bit like blue cheese. You get the long picks and you pull out the whelks. These come from Kent. Pinkies. Okay, so these are Dartmouth pink prawns. Um, again, from the southwest. Fantastic. They come up. Well, sometimes we get them in from Scandinavia. Right. The shell on, okay, there's a little bit of work there, but when you go for your platter fruit de mer, it's not about, oh, a quick bite to eat. You take your time, yeah, you get your sure, hands in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice. nice bit of mayonnaise, you know, pink prawns and mayonnaise. Yeah. The difference between this and something that's in a bag that's frozen, obviously, number one, these aren't. Number two is the sweetness. You get that lovely sweet flavor. Right. Working our way around here, we've got the Pallord clams. So these again come in from Dorset. Um, you dig them up on the beach. So the guys have got, they're like plows and they run them up and down the beach and dig up the clams, give them a really good rinse. Okay, we finish them off with a little little bit of dry chili mixed with salt and, and sherry vinegar. Okay. Toss them through on the plate. Then we've got a scallops, we've got diver scallops, they come from the Orkney Isles. So again, come in, beautiful big plump scallops. That's served raw, just lemon juice, a bit of salt. That'll certainly put some lead in your pencil, <laughs> that one. And then we've got the mussels over here. Okay, so uh, the mussels we buy in Randall and Auburn, as much as possible, we try and buy um, all of our seafood indigenously from the UK. Okay. But the mussels, we've got a great source coming in from Holland. Right. right up in the north of Holland. Very, very pure water. The best seafood always comes when you've got low population densities because humans generally pollute. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. where there's not a lot of people, you usually find there's great seafood. And that's the way you look at it. You don't want too much shipping. You want very, very pure water. With these mussels, we've been buying these now for about five years from Holland, never had an issue, never had a problem. They're lovely and white, the meat's really pure. They haven't got that strong flavor, they're, they're just very, very light. Then down the lower level here, this is a Fouille de Mer Royale, so it comes with the, um, comes with the lobster. lobster. Um, so the lobsters, there is a season for, for British lobster. Um, and it, it, the main thing is about, obviously in the winter, it's harder to get UK lobsters because the tides become so ferocious. Okay. So it's very hard to pull up lobster pots. Yeah quite far out, you get these really strong tides, can be tricky. So I always try and get British lobster, and we get that from Cornwall. They come in from a, a chap from Devil's Harvest, in fact, he calls himself. Um, if we can't get the, the, the British lobsters, um, we tend to get the ones from North America. The amazing things, crustaceans, you know, prehistoric creature, and yeah. it, can, it can lose every bit of it and regrow every year. Really? It just keeps, so it can pull its claws off, throw it back in the sea, and it'll just regrow yeah. them every year. And they're not quite sure how long they go on for. They reckon, they know there's a few crab out there three, 400 years old, they think, yeah. but they're not that sure, because obviously we're, none of us are around <laughs> long enough to know. Finally, here we've got the oysters, okay? So, um, a fascinating species oyster. It's an hermaphrodite. So it, it, it goes from female, spawns, becomes a male, female, male, female, male. Mind, um, so, and that basically happens around temperature of the water. Oh, so right. what you find with the old saying, the R in the month, okay, what it relates to is the season of the year. Um, but these are gigas oyster, oysters, rock oysters. So now they're very good at farming these to the point that you can um, put cold water, hence why they put them in locks. Right. So you get this mountain streams running off. As long as the water stays below 70 de 17 degrees, you get a nice oyster that's a male. If 
they get a bit creamy, and some people go, oh, I love them when they're creamy. <laughs> you don't want to eat those. No, no. They're female, they've become female, and they get all creamy because they've got eggs in them, right? So right. you've got a lovely, clear oyster. That's yeah. what you always want to look for, lovely and clean. This is a rock oyster. We've got three varieties that we sell in Randall Auburn. So we've got the French ones, which are called Fin de Clairs, okay. um, from Omaha Beach in Normandy. We've got the Irish oysters, uh, Northwest Island, fantastic, pure. Again, no one's there. No, no, not many people yeah. there. Lots yeah. of rocks, not a lot of shipping. Um, fantastic oysters we get from Ireland. Um, and finally, the English oysters. Um, the irony is we don't actually really get them from England, they're from Jersey. These bad boys, you shuck them live, obviously they're still alive, yeah. and you eat them live, basically. You squeeze vinegar on them or lemon juice, and that's how you eat them. You don't want to eat a dead oyster because you'll become a dead man. <laughs> we always get our oysters coming in with, they give you a five day ticket on an oyster from when it arrives, yeah. from the day it's pulled from the sea, it can survive for five days. In Randall and Auburn, we'll only serve them up to three days on the ticket. Okay. And then um, if in doubt, deep fry them. Oysters tempura on day four. Nice. Yeah. Right. There's That's nothing wrong with them. You see oysters tempura in the menu, you don't think, oh, now you've given it away. We're still two days ahead. But obviously, once you cook an oyster, it becomes much safer in the respect that you're taking it above 74 degrees, yeah. so you cooked it. These bad boys, you know, they, they, they're, 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 they're raw, they're fresh. Yeah. So that's how it works. It's a, it's a funny old thing in the restaurant. You, you, you send one of these out and you get a run, especially at the yeah, weekend. It's impressive, isn't it? You, it's, it, it especially if you, as you said, you're on a date or something. Yeah. You, you see some guy producing that and yeah. you're thinking, bang, you know. This guy, look, I, don't, yeah. I want that. You know, the other thing I think that, you know, is, is different about the seafood than, than any other varieties of food, really, apart from game, is it's all wild. Yeah. Apart from the oysters, they farm the oysters but this is all wild food. It's yeah. collected and it's harvested wild, you know? And it's a little bit like the fish, of course. You know, people go out and they hunt it. And, and we get all of our fish, most of our fish from Peterhead and Brixham, okay. directly from boats. So we have a policy at Randall Auburn from net to plate. Yes. Um, so while I'm binging it away, or well, Brian is the head chef on WhatsApp, it, it, yeah. they're out at sea. And they're catching We're it. telling them what we want. And um, obviously they're not just catching for us, they're catching a lot yeah, of fish yeah. out there now. Um, but the lovely thing is, I know, for example, all that fish arrived this morning, yeah. that left Peterhead last night, came in first thing this morning, cracked the boxes open, all you can smell is the sea. It's it's none of that yeah, smelly yeah, fish stuff. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, this, this doesn't smell either. That's, no. a, that's, a, that's a secret. Of what you want to smell is, is the ocean. Yeah. When, a bit like when you walk down the beach and you kick a bit of seaweed, that, but not the smelly seaweed. Yeah, when it's yeah, all nice yeah, yeah. and salty and fresh, that's what you want, yeah. you know. Golden rule with oysters is always you look at them and you just see, for example, that's all just lovely, clear, clear fluid. Yeah. Nothing, just all I can smell is the ocean there. All I can smell, it's just yeah. salt water. You've got to be very guarded. We're very careful the way we work with this stuff, yeah. what we do. Everything's recorded, the date labels, and it's all about from net to plate as quickly as possible. That's Excellent. where the flavor comes yeah. from. Best thing to eat with seafood, really. Um, bubbles are good. Yeah, because I was going to ask you, you know, you, you sat here and you're thinking, right, what, what's that? What, and you're not going to have a pint of Vimto or, you know, a pint or anything like Champagne. Champagne and bubbles? Champagne. Yeah. Um, Prosecco. Yeah. Carver. What you're looking for is something that's got acidity. So, right. because it works so well. Seafood, especially like this, crustacean is quite buttery, it's quite rich. So you want a wine that's sharp, and obviously okay. champagne often is quite sharp. You don't want something too sweet. So a very sweet Prosecco, it gets all too much. Right. It's overload. You need acidity. Okay. So champagne works perfectly. A dry Prosecco, um, that's always a nice drop. All white wine, and you want a nice, like a Viognier, like a lovely, crisp, sharp wine, a good Chardonnay. Um, if you're feeling flush, a white Burgundy always goes oh, down well. Yeah. Um, it's nice, and just, just it blends beautifully uh, with, with the seafood, never really red wine. No. Um, you, you're playing, you're playing with <laughs> with your life with red wine. It's too rich, red wine. You have red wine and oysters, you, you know, or red wine and mussels. Mm. No. If you've got a stomach of iron, you'd be all right. But you've got to remember that this is pretty powerful stuff. You know, you eat, you're eating all the platter for platter for the mayor. You plow through one of these. You know, what you're going to have for dessert? Well, keep it simple. You know, maybe a nice little lemon tart or yeah. you, you don't want to get too heavy. The one thing that does work beautifully, of course, with oysters is, is, a, is a stout. Bottle really? stout. Yeah, stout's oh, yeah. great with oysters. You know, it's the Irish thing oh, of it. Yeah. Good sure, yeah. oysters and Guinness, you yeah. know. And that does work very, very well. People now are coming up with new ones, you know, whiskey and oysters. Yeah, um, I have it. Doesn't that, that, that do you in? I think it does. Yeah. I think it does. But, you know, many a whiskey maker out there would want to string me up. Ooh, for good, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I'm... For me, you know, someone else came up and doing oysters with gin. 
for me, that's a bit ferocious, you yeah. know. I mean, I'd have a nice oh. cooked piece of fish, maybe with a bit of gin on the yeah. side. But for me, I, I, I am I am old school. They always laugh at me there. I'm a right traditionalist. And I just think, look, oysters, for me, it's oysters and champagne every time, yeah. you know. So, uh, and that works. And uh, it, it's a good thing, you know.